everybody now we are going to talk about our next chapter that is time and space complexity so from the beginning itself we have been telling you i have been telling you from the loop chapter itself so the time complexity of bubble sort is big of n square after the time complexity of searching the largest element in our array is big of n and all those things now we are going to study what is time complexity or what is space complexity and how do we represent those things in our code and what is big of n and from the beginning itself we have been talking like uh, the mathematical terms like as a log n after that uh, n square after that big of n so we are going to understand what are these symbols means what is the big of uh, n means and all those mathematical things and we are going to understand what is time complexity and what is space complexity and how it is related to our coding and how uh, time complexity and space complexity can impact our given algorithm or given code now let us talk about first of all this is a very very important chapter right uh, time complexity and space complexity is a very very important chapter and uh, uh, some interviews they may directly ask you right uh, tell me the time complexity of this given algorithm or uh, they will after executing the code they will ask you like what is time complexity of your code so you need to tell them that this is the somewhat time complexity of my given uh, code that i have written in my computer you have to tell them and uh, they might ask you to calculate the time complexity of the given like a uh, program or given code and in the mcqs question also this is very very important so this is important when it comes to interviews interviews and it is very very important uh, for like our college perspective also so when we are giving exams uh, my our exams we might get question like related to like uh, uh, which is efficient code and uh, which is efficient algorithm or uh, having greater time complexity means efficient or not and these sort of so you will use it in exams also or uh, after that irrespective of uh, like data structure whether you are studying stack whether you are studying queue we will study about them in our later chapters uh, irrespective of code efficiency of our code means uh, how much time it gonna take to execute or how much uh, like uh, it can take how many variables it can take or how much input can it take and execute in a fraction of second or in a like a uh, minimum amount of time that efficiency we can we can tell um, like the efficiency of the code using time and space complexity after that one more thing that uh, when after we studied after we uh, studied all the things related to like time complexity and space complexity we notice a change in our thinking towards programming right you will like uh, uh, think logically and you will make efficient codes after studying like uh, space and time complexity you will make efficient codes and you will understand oh this code is not a efficient code because it is taking like more time to execute and this code is a efficient code because it is taking less time to execute so we will study and uh, you will definitely notice that uh, the efficiency of your code increase after this chapter and your problem solving skills your problem solving skills will also increase after like studying this chapter so in this chapter we are going to mainly focus on uh, how a particular code is efficient based on two parameters or two like uh, you can say complexities order wise complexities that is time and space and we are going to study them in detail and we are going to study how we can represent those complexities uh, in mathematical way and what is the mathematical meaning of those kind of things right so let us first of all talk about time complexity so time complexity is nothing but uh, suppose let us take a uh, time complexity and you have like a uh, time complexity you have written some code and the meaning of time complexity is the relation relation between your code and the input and the input so it is not like actual time like one second two second three second like it is not the actual real world time the meaning of time complexity is time complexity is the relation between uh, given input after it, our code so the relation between like a uh, execution process of uh, the, our code and uh, the given parameter or given input by our user so this relation will uh, represent by the time complexity so here time complexity like uh, let us consider that our code is taking like around uh, 10 milliseconds or 12 milliseconds based on the given input parameter so uh, the efficient code the efficiency is greater the efficiency of a particular code is greater when our time complexity is less 
so if we have like a time complexity like constant time or linear time and all those kind of time then uh, our code is considered to be efficient suppose let us take an example that uh, facebook runs a page right facebook runs its website and like they are not like one or ten users in the facebook they are like thousands not even thousands billions of users daily so they don't want like uh, their page to be like scrolling or buffer buffering again and again they don't want their page to be slow so what they do they make their course efficient and how they can make their course efficient by studying or by making their course which has less time complexity and less space complexity so i hope you have understood that time complexity is the relation between the between our code and the input parameter after similarly space complexity is not the real space like we live in three dimensional space right so all around the things this is tiles this is building this is pen this is not like a real space uh, in computer language space complexity means the memory memory occupied by a particular like uh, algorithm so the less memory it will occupy the less memory it will occupy it is considered as good code so we don't want like a good code so we don't want like unnecessary data unnecessary memory wastage so to avoid that uh, we will make our code which has less space complexity okay so the uh, if whatever, whatever the code which has like less space and less uh, time complexity those codes uh, codes are considered to be like a uh, efficient codes i hope you have understood the concept uh, like uh, for uh, i have taken also the example of facebook that they don't want their website to like uh, buffer for a longer period of time they want like responsive websites so to make that uh, in the back end they make some codes which are they use codes which has less time complexity that means that it will like uh, load faster it will like uh, give uh, take input faster and it will give output faster so uh, whatever the input we have taken uh, in minimum span amount of time it will give the exp uh, output so that thing it will give the execution that thing is known as time complexity after it we don't want to create like unnecessary memory unnecessary memory wastage in our computer so to tackle with that we study about space complexity okay i hope you have understood now let us talk about a little bit deeper about order complexity analysis so the meaning of complexity to understand the meaning of complexity let us take example of cars so most of the guys most of the college students like love cars and bikes so cars in cars we may have some parameters such as speed such as speed like uh, how much time it will take to reach from 0 to 100 km per hour after that uh, Uh, price of our car what is the price of our car after it, its capacity how many seats it has like five seater or like four seater or six seater suv sedan or muv all those things or you can say size of the car right how much the size is like of our given car right these are some parameters these are my different parameters okay so if the speed of the car is uh, like a uh, uh, more or uh, it will reach like uh, in like 1 second from 0 to 100 then it is considered as a good car so we will prefer those kind of car like most of the college students will prefer those kind of car so if the price of the car is less then we will prefer those car if the price of the car is less and the uh, qualities or the features are high then we prefer those kind of cars after that if the capacity if we are like using it for our family then we want capacity to be high to be like a much big car like muv so we prefer muv in that scenario so based on our conditions we like take the parameter and whatever the our scenario is from that particular scenario we'll choose our car similarly uh, you can say complexity means uh, you can say that uh, time we, in complexity we have two things that is time complexity and space complexity here similarly the features of car will describe the like car quality right so speed price capacity these three things will represent the quality of a car so if these three things are good then the quality of our car is good right if these three th uh, features are like extraordinary then uh, we like definitely buy the, that car because the car is itself extraordinary so similarly here time complexity if the time complexity and the space complexity represents the efficiency the efficiency of our code efficiency of our code right if the if we want like a, a more efficient code if we want like faster code in just milliseconds in just nanoseconds 
then we'll choose code which has like less space complexity and which don't like uh, uh, hold excess memory or creates excess memory unnecessary memory so we'll like avoid this thing such that our code will become more efficient so time complexity and space complexity will represent the efficiency of our code i hope you have understood the basic concept now let us talk about uh, time complexity so what is time complexity so to understand the meaning of time complexity let us take example let us take a example to understand what is the actual meaning of time time complexity let us take example one that is i want to uh, search in a given array i want to search the largest element let us take a, a example as a one eight minus one two five four like uh, this is my given array okay i am taking it as my example okay now i want to find out the largest element present in our array so in previous class in arrays chapter we used uh, algorithm to find the largest element present in our array so what we uh, use here will like create a maximum array and initialize with minus infinity after it run a loop run like apply linear search linear search and uh, like go at each iteration and see what is the biggest element right okay see what is the biggest element right here uh, you can see that my max will initially will be minus 8 after it, uh, at first iteration my max will become 1 after it, at second iteration my max will become 8 after it, and so on minus 1 uh, doesn't change 2 doesn't change 5 doesn't change 4 doesn't change so my maximum value will be 8 so this is how i will like uh, run my uh, loop for n times uh, and uh, I will find out this is the basic algorithm for finding the largest element present in our array. Now let us talk about the worst case scenario. Like uh, what is the worst case scenario? Suppose uh, let us take I am taking another array for example to uh, explain it even more better that this is my given array. So the largest element is present at the last. That particular condition uh, like uh, suppose let us consider in the first example in uh, let us consider this is my example here. So uh, when I like uh, uh, get the largest element that is 8 I will stop my loop because I know that in the rest of my array the elements are like less than 8 so uh, this is kind of an average case scenario so the worst case scenario will be if the present element if the largest element is at the last then I need to run my loop for n times n times suppose the size of the array is n then I need to run my loop for n times okay so the worst case will be worst case will be I need to run my loop for n times so here uh, can i say that number of operations will increase if uh, size of the array increases like uh, suppose like the largest element is present at the last element at the last index then i need to like go at each iteration i need to go at each iteration and check the linear search i need to apply at uh, all the for all the elements i need to run like uh, uh, n times our loop so let us consider here the number of elements are 0 1 2 3 4 5 so uh, here total number of elements are 6 so i need to run my loop 6 times now let us take a scenario that uh, suppose our given our given array is 10 to the power of 3 or our given array is 10 to the power of 6 so just imagine that i am running my loop for 1 lakh times so it's gonna take more time because I need to go at every index from 0th index to 1 lakh index. So I need to go at each index. I need to find the like uh, what I can say the element of the particular array. Can I say from this case uh, from this particular case uh, my time taking the whatever the my time is taking uh, is directly proportional my time is directly proportional to number of size of elements so if my number of size of the array increases then the time taken for running the loop will also increase okay first condition now let us take another example let us take another example that my array is sorted my array is sorted now let us take example one two three four this is my uh, sorted array right so uh, if this is a sorted array so to find largest to find largest can i write that if this particular array is sorted in increasing fashion if this particular array is sorted in increasing fashion can i write that my largest element is equals to arr of n minus 1 right that is the last element whatever the last element present that should be my like largest element because the array is sorted in ascending order right okay so my largest value here 
is uh, error of n minus 1 so how many operations i am performing i am performing one operation suppose let us take uh, uh, like the size of the array is 10 to the power of 3 at 10 to the power of 3 how many operations i am performing i am performing one operation so how many operations one operation suppose let us take uh, 10, uh, n is equal to 10 to the power of 6 then uh, let us take like this is the 10 to the power of 6 let us consider that this is the 10 to the power of 6 element so how many pro operations i am performing i am performing one operation right okay so in case one in example one in example one we can i can extract one condition that is my times is directly proportional to the size of the array so at each condition uh, you can see that i am performing this is my first operation second operation third operation fourth operation fifth operation sixth operation so for n is equal to six i am up, uh, uh, like performing six operations so the time uh, which is going to take to run the uh, loop increases as the input of our array increases so can i write that my times is directly proportional to my size of the array so if the size of the array increases then the time will also increase okay so in the second case in the second case time is independent time is independent can i write that is uh, suppose let us take that n is equal to 10 to the power of 9 but how many operations i am performing i am performing like one operation that is constant operations so these are constant operations so uh, n is not dependent on time so here i can write that uh, time is independent here time is independent here here i can write that time is dependent dependent on size of the array size of the array or in other words uh, number of operations so if number of operations increases then the time that should take that will take will increase okay so here these are the two uh, cases i have obtained so for linear search can i write remember guys i want to tell you one thing that we always first of all let me change my ink such that it will get highlighted okay so we always we always when it comes to time complexity we always focus on worst case so always as programmers or in our life you should always like focus on what should be the worst case at worst at worst case uh, what should be the situation like so our code what is the worst case of our code you need to first of all like uh, understand that if uh, at the worst case what should be the time complexity you need to understand these sort of things okay so always remember guys we always focus when we are writing our code we always focus for worst case okay worst case scenario we don't like consider uh, like least case or average case we only consider it at worst case suppose n is equal to 10 to the power of 10 at that particular how many operations i'm going to perform and uh, for those kind of things we need to like uh, first of all like uh, think about it before recording all those things okay so the graph of linear time complexity looks like this so for linear time complexity you can see that uh, at uh, n is equal to 0 let us consider that uh, this is my time after this is my input size n let us consider n so can i write uh, that my graph looks like this yeah my graph will look like this so as the input increases uh, my time will also increases so this is known as a sprite line and in mathematics the equation of sprite line is y is equal to ax plus b or in other words i can write my time is equal to a into input size plus b so the time complexity for this thing will be big of n we talk about like uh, uh, what is uh, big of uh, n or what is big o, big o means and uh, we will talk about how big o is derived and what is the logic for big o and why we are writing here you can see that our equation is time is equal to a into input plus b and where a and b are constants okay so this chapter will going to be like a theoretical uh, session we are going to analyze uh, like uh, uh, different uh, codes we studied in previous algorithm previous chapters we have we have studied like different algorithms different codes now we are going to perform the uh, like uh, uh, analysis for calculating the complexities of that particular algorithm okay so we will study about like big of o in our upcoming videos
now let us uh, come to our beautiful beautiful definition that we have written here that amount of space first of all let me clear all those things such that it will get like better it will be clear so uh, that amount of space or time taken by an algorithm as a function of input size not the actual time so what is the meaning of this thing so to understand the meaning of this particular definition let us take example that uh, uh, we have written a program we have written a program let us consider that this is my given like size of the array 1 2 3 4 5 6 and i am performing like linear search for finding the largest of the element present here so largest element is here right so the this is the worst case actually okay so here number of elements are 6 so let us consider that the time taken let us consider that the time taken is 2 milliseconds right now i am like giving an input for like n is equal to 100 so for this particular input size let us consider that our time has taken around like 100 milliseconds so uh, what what is the actual meaning of uh, time complexity means uh, this is the time taken but this is not time complexity this is the time taken but this is not time complexity the meaning of time complexity is the relation of our algorithm with the input size so time complexity is a function is a function which will represent the relation the relation between our code between our code and input size so it will represent the relation between our code or algorithm with our input size not the actual time you can see that the actual time here is 2 millisecond for n is equal to 6 and n is equal to 2 for the time will be uh, 100 milliseconds so the time which is taking here is changing but the relation the function will not change so the parameters or suppose let us consider that i am taking as an example that f of x is equal to 2x this is a function right in max we studied functions so here this is the output and this will be my output so uh, whatever the like parameters i will pass here the value will be like different so if i pass some parameter the output will be different suppose here i am passing 0 then i will get output 0 if i am passing 1 then output will be 2 if i am passing 2 the output will be 4 here you can see that the numbers are changing but the function the basic function or the like underlying function or relation is not changing that underlying function or relation is known as time complexity to understand that first of all uh, there are two ways to calculate time complexity right there are two ways to calculate time complexity so to, ca to calculate time complexity we use two methods so the first method is experimental method experimental method in this we use trial and error suppose uh, here in this we will take n is equal to 10 and we will uh, calculate the time needed suppose uh, 2 milliseconds let us take n is equal to 100 then we will calculate the time that uh, uh, needed to execute this particular question right let us consider 10 milliseconds after that i am just taking random values now let us take n is equal to 10 to the power of 6 and the time taken for this execution is uh, 200 milliseconds so we will plot the graph for the input size and the time taken and from the graph we'll get our time complexity okay now we don't use experimental method when it comes to interviews in colleges most of the cases we don't use experimental method right i just wanted to tell you that's why i'm telling you right and the second method is theoretical method is theoretical method in this uh, we'll plot graph and we'll just see the structure of our like a uh, uh, change in our graph right structure and uh, structure and the relation between input and the uh, like a uh, uh, time taken right so for linear search we have seen that this is my input and this is my time and this is the graph we got so as the like uh, the size of the array increases the space or the time also increased okay so this is the graph okay so you can see that as the time increases uh, the as the time and as the size increases the time is also increasing so this will give me a straight line and this will represent the time taken this will represent this and these thing will represent the size of the array but what is uh, what varies time complexity this is my time complexity so this is the relation and this thing is known as time complexity and uh, the here uh, time is equal to a n plus b right that is t is equal to a n plus b 
okay where a and b are constants here will uh, for time complexity will ignore like constants will ignore constants and time complexity will become big of n so this is my time complexity for the given code so we don't use experimental method and all those things we'll just first of all see the basic structure of if this is the input and this is the time then this will give me the graph so the graph we got the line here you can see that this is the line right so this line is known as my time complexity so this line will represent the structure or the relation between the parameter and the time so this thing is known as time complexity here we'll ignore the constants and we'll just uh, take big of n now let us talk about constant time so in case 2 we got like constant time right we are only performing whatever the parameter or whatever the input will be we are just performing one operation right so that uh, at that particular case in the case 2 the time complexity is constant we are performing one operation so here this is my linear search like let us consider that this is my time and this is my uh, number of output okay now uh, this is the graph I got for my linear search right as the input size increases the uh, time uh, that needed will also increase like this yeah let me like uh, re redraw this thing this is my time and this is my input now you can see that at the time for linear search this is the graph we got like as the input size increases the time will also get increased and this is the graph will get for linear search but for like constant time whatever the number of operations will be but the time remains constant here the time let us consider that this is the uh, constant time and whatever the parameter as the parameter increases but our constant time will not change so here the time complexity is big of one here the time complexity is big of n so this is linear time complexity and this is constant time complexity and you have to remember one thing that linear time complexity is not efficient when compared to constant time so constant time complexity is way efficient than linear time complexity right big of n this is more efficient this is like kind of less efficient when compared to uh, constant time now let us talk about the meaning of big of o so the meaning of big of o means big of o represent the upper boundary the upper boundary of a particular given algorithm okay so what is the meaning of upper boundary it will represent the limit of that particular like particular given algorithm suppose let us take a linear search so or let us take a algorithm like bubble sort so bubble sort will take big of n square right so this is known as the worst case uh, like a worst case scenario so uh, the time complexity of bubble sort will not exit the worst case so remember guys that in for calculating like time complexity and space complexities we always take worst case scenario only so uh, in some cases let us take example that algorithm is taking big of n square time so in some scenarios in some scenarios let us consider that for some input for some input it is taking big of n time and for some small inputs it may take a big of one time right for some input it may take big of n log n time but these are like less than these are like less than big of n square the big of o big o represents the limit at which the time complexity worst case time complexity can be but it can't exit that it means that here uh, for particular algorithm that uh, time complexity big of n square means for some algorithm for some input it might take big of one for some uh, input it, uh, it might take big of one after it for some input it might take big of log n but it can't exist uh, exit or it can't like uh, go out of big of n square because that is the worst case so whatever the output you will give uh, the worst case scenario will be big of n square so it should not be like a uh, big of n square should not uh, like we don't get output as big of n cube n cube these can't be possible that is the meaning of big of o big o so that is the upper limit so from the upper limit it can't cross this is the upper boundary 
so from the upper boundary the algorithm or the given code will not cross so this is the worst case so in some scenarios we might get values which are lower than the worst case but we can't cross worst case scenario this is the meaning of big of o so here let us take a condition that uh, here there are uh, two conditions there are two conditions to represent big of o first one is uh, uh, ignore constants ignore constants and second thing is uh, take largest term so let us take a condition that our given code uh, is taking like big of uh, n square time or big of n square time as my like a uh, time complexity so can i write that my time is equals to that my time this is the time and this is my input right so from the graph can i write that my given code will take like this as my can i write the equation for big of n square this will give me a quadratic equation a n square plus b n plus c right okay so the according to the rule first of all i need to ignore all the constants so here i will i don't consider constants so i will remove all these things so my time comp time will become n square plus n okay after it i will like uh, take only the largest value so uh, in this uh, in this into one right okay so in this uh, uh, i hope you are coming from a math background you studied in 9th 10th poly polynomials so here the largest term which is present is n square so this is the worst case this is the worst case right so the time complexity of this particular thing will become uh, big of n square so time complexity will become big of n so we'll ignore all the constants after it will ignore or will strike out the lower elements and will take the largest element which is present in my polynomial and that thing will become my time complexity of the given code so let us take example that here our algorithm is taking log n time so this is how log n will should uh, look like after this is my uh, n square time right okay so at some point you can see that uh, the log n and n square is same but after some point you can see that the log n is like uh, taking some lower time so you can see that let us take example that our time is equals to a n square plus n log n so this is the equation i got from my output okay so this is the graph for n log n and this is the graph for n square so here what i do i will take the worst case scenario this is my worst case right this will take higher time so what i told you that will always consider only the worst case for calculating big of o so here this is the worst case this might be the best case that is like it is it will take uh, like lower time for calculating our uh, like uh, uh, for execution but this this line this particular line our line 1 line 2 so line 1 will take more time to execute so taking more times means worst case so what i told you that we only consider worst case to calculate time complexity okay so here we will ignore this we will ignore this and our time complexity will become big of n square it means that uh, the upper limit or the upper last boundary of my given code is big of n square it can't be like big of n cube it can't be but it can big of n it can big of 1 or log n it can be yeah, the values which are less than big of n square it can be these values but it can't be like uh, the value which is greater than my time complexity i hope you have understood the big o concept now now let us talk about a little bit about uh, uh, how we got like a uh, uh, big o notation mathematically so if you are not like that much interested in studying math and uh, the theoretical part of this uh, so i will study uh, i will recommend you like if you want to just see the overlay these things are not like asked in when it comes to placements and internships these things are not asked and most of the exams also they don't ask these sort of questions right but i'm just telling you the theory behind it if you are interested in studying theory then i will recommend your book that is the name of the book is corman so you can study uh, the time complexity and space complexity in the corman book so this is a very very good book i am recommending you if you are interested in the theory part of this thing then you can study about it now let us talk about a little bit about mathematical terms of uh, like uh, 
big of O notation. So how, how it is mathematically derived or what are the things that go into mathematical like a derivation and all those things. So if you are not really interested in mathematical stuff or how we got the big of O notation mathematically if you just got the intuition and the logic that we have discussed before then you can skip this particular video then it's not like that much necessary for you right okay now let us talk about how we got uh, the big O notation mathematically okay so here let us take that uh, time is a function of our input okay so i can describe my time as f of n is equals to a n square plus big of n okay so what i told you that we will ignore our constants after it will take only the largest term so our time complexity will become n square okay big of n square so can i write that this particular this is also a function right n square is also a function that can i write that g of n is equal to n square so here time complexity is equal to big of g of n okay so my function is f of n is equal to a n square plus b n so we will get our big of o notation from this particular limit right the limit is the limit n tends to infinity f of n divided by g of n and we will take modulus of the given operator because we don't consider negative values is should be less than or equal to infinity right this is the representation mathematical representation of big of o so this is the like basic representation of our mathematical representation of big of o now we'll stop here this is not like that much necessary but i just wanted to tell you a little bit theory part about this thing now let us talk about a little bit more about big of omega so big of o will represent the upper bound and big of omega will represent the lower bound that is our best case scenario so big of o big of o will represent upper bound upper bound and nothing but this is worst case worst case whereas big of omega will represent lower bound lower bound and this is our best case so uh, that means that uh, here let us consider that the best case is uh, big of n square so uh, our like uh, big of omega can't be big of 1 big of uh, like 0 and all big of like uh, log n and all those things this can't be possible here because this is the basic level this is the base level so whatever the value uh, that we got or that we get as my time complexity should be greater than my big of n square because this is the best case right okay so it implies that uh, uh, my time complexity can be big of n cube uh, n to the power of 4 n to the power of 5 n to the power of infinity these things so whatever the things greater than my big, um, big of uh, uh, omega of n square should be allowed but those things which are less than big of here that is nothing but omega of n square is not allowed so, so this is the meaning of uh, like big of omega notation i can also like uh, draw the diagram for representing the uh, big of omega this is big of o and big of omega so this is my upper boundary and this is my lower boundary so this is my best case okay so whatever the value we will get uh, for time complexity will should be greater than or equal to this right should be greater than or equal to this so uh, whatever the value we will get like the omega value uh, should can uh, uh, it is possible to get higher values right but can't be possible to get lower values than big of omega okay got my point after for big of o i should get my values less than my big of o okay suppose let us take uh, my big of o is n square then big of n big of n square n log n big of 1 is possible but big of n cube big of n square n to the power of 4 big of n to the power of 5 is not possible so whatever the values i will get should be less than my like big of o i hope you have understood the point right now so the, this is the difference between big of o and big of omega so big of o will give me worst case and big of omega will give me best case okay now let us talk about uh, big of theta right uh, this is not like that much necessary but i am telling you so big of theta will give me the average case the average case and average case might lie here right okay so average case means if my left boundary 
and my upper boundary that is my lower boundary and my upper boundary are same that particular condition will call it as average case let us consider that big of like lower boundary is big of uh, omega of n square and upper boundary is uh, omega of n square so if both are n square n square that is uh, uh, omega of n square big of n square then that thing is known as average of n square that is nothing but uh, big of theta so these are the things big of omega big of theta and big of uh, omega right sorry big of o big of omega and big of theta so big of o will represent the worst case big of theta will represent the average case big of omega will represent the best case so in uh, to calculate time complexity we always consider worst case that is big of o so we don't need a, like a big of theta big of theta and big of omega we don't need that much but you should remember big of o now let us see some of the time complexities here here this is the linear time complexity this is the linear time complexity and uh, log n time complexity after the uh, linear sorry this is the constant time complexity log n time complexity linear after the uh, uh, square complexity that is big of n square after this is exponential time complexity so uh, constant uh, time is like more efficient than log n and uh, log n is like more efficient than linear time complexity and uh, n square is like uh, more efficient than exponential time complexity and exponential is like the worst time complexity ever so we code our codes uh, and we try you guys always try your best to, to not to get not to get exponential time complexity because it is uh, the worst code it is the worst efficient algorithm so whatever the code if your code is getting like a exponential time complexity then it is a wrong code then it is not it will not work in any, any coding platforms it will not like execute in any interview questions so you should always avoid you should be always like a keep a distance from exponential power it might in some cases it will accept like a square time complexity or linear time complexity and uh, they are around uh, three to four time complexities uh, around three different time complexity that are not here that is a cube time complexity and some other so uh, so when we move into the upcoming chapters uh, and when we study in the chapter itself uh, about like uh, single loop analysis double loop analysis you will understand the things which are going to like a uh, 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 different types, uh, sort of time complexities and it will become like very very easy to understand all those things okay right now uh, what i told you that you should always stay away from exponential time complexity right exponential is the worst code exponential is like more inefficient code and noobs i'm telling you that the people who are noobs will write uh, exponential codes so exponential code will not work in any of the uh, like coding platforms interviews in exams also in our exams in college exams also exponential codes are like the worst so stay away from exponential codes and i need to tell you one thing that we did recursion problems right we did recursion problems like fibonacci and uh, like some sort of other problems like a uh, uh, friend sparing problem right these sort of things we do we did in the recursion chapter in our previous chapter and i want to tell you one thing that some ch questions we did in the previous chapters those uh, are based on those things those problems will give me exponential time so these thing uh, whatever the questions i told you some questions will give me exponential code in recursion chapter and uh, you might wonder that uh, i just told you that we don't need write uh, exponential code and i am telling you that we did exponential like time complexity questions and uh, those are the worst codes i am telling you that those are the worst codes codes okay so you don't need to worry uh, so from this uh, now we have studied time complexity we know the logic so from the logic we'll uh, try to optimize our code we'll try to optimize so from the exponential time complexity uh, from using our like knowledge of time complexity and space complexity we'll like, try to optimize the code and we will optimize those questions which we did before using a technique called as memoization memoization and we'll study about memoization in detail when we are doing dp chapter right so in dp i will tell you those questions how to do 
how to like uh, do those kind of questions in an efficient manner okay you don't need to worry that i did my question i did my question in uh, exponential time and all those things you don't need to worry right now you from that recursion chapter we just got the basic like uh, uh, overlay or the understanding of recursions in dp and or in upcoming chapters we will like study about uh, in advance how recursion works how like a uh, different sort of recursion techniques works and on those chapters we will try to optimize our previous question codes okay now this uh, is about time complexity similarly uh, we studied about time complexity right similarly there is a concept called as space complexity so in computers in our java uh, memory is occupied in two forms memory space is occupied in two forms that is heaps and the second one is the stacks so whatever the like uh, uh, functions we are calling or whatever the functions we are creating those things are created in the form of uh, like stacks and similarly whatever the objects we created are scanner class after it in the oops chapter we created like many objects those objects are stored in the form of heaps so these are the two kind of like uh, memory spaces we have in java okay so whatever the variable we create whatever the like a, a single data type we create those data type will occupy the memory in our like given code okay in our compiler or in our memory okay so uh, this is the space complexity is very very similar to like uh, time complexity so this is my space uh, that needed memory basically after this is my input so uh, linear space complexity means the input size as the input size increases the space that we needed will also increase okay this is the basic concept here right this is the graph so this will give me linear time complexity okay okay so this is uh, like very very similar to like a uh, time complexity hello everybody up to now we have discussed about what is time complexity what is space complexity and how it can affect the efficiency of our code so whatever the code we are returning uh, we need to optimize that particular code so uh, we need to like increase the efficiency see, to so to increase the efficiency of particular code we need to like uh, write code which are having less time complexity and less space complexity and we have seen already like different uh, like time complexity graphs like linear time complexity uh, logarithmic time complexity exponential time complexity big of n square and what is big of o big of omega big of theta and all those kind of things now let us see how we can like able to extract the time complexity of the given code so in this interviewer our user will give us the code and we need to tell that what is the time complexity of the particular given code so let us start with simple iteration here we will have a simple loop that is a single loop one loop in this uh, the iterator is i is equals to zero and i should be less than n so we are running our loop n times after it, we are what we are doing we are incrementing the value of i that is i is equals to i plus one in this we are doing some constant work in the in our loop so let us consider that that particular constant work as k okay so here let us consider that n is equals to 10 so when n is equals to 10 our iteration will start from 0 and it will like up to goes up to 9 and how many times our loop will run our loop will run up to 10 times okay so when n is equals to 10 our loop will run 10 times so let us consider an example that uh, we are starting our like uh, for loop from i is equals to 0 up to n right in this let us consider that i am uh, doing a single operation that is i am doing single operation that is uh, i am printing the value of i so here i am performing single operation so single operation is a constant work right so constant work okay or let us consider that another scenario that i am not like doing single work i am like uh, performing multiple operations let us consider that i am printing value of i after it, I am printing value of i plus 1. After it, I am printing value of i plus 2. Printing the value of i plus 2. Here, you can see that I am performing 3 operations. But here also, uh, the work which I am doing inside my loop is constant. Is constant. So, we will represent the constant work done by a notation that is big of 1. So, here, the whatever the operation we are doing, we will represent it with our big of 1. Okay, so the work which is going on in our inner loop or in inside the loop is constant. Whether it is a one operation, whether it is a three operations, whether it is a five operations, the operations are constant throughout the loop. Okay, so let us consider that uh, at 
i is equals to zero iteration i am doing k work after it i will become one so i will become work after it i will do another work after it i will become two <coughs> after it i will do another work after it i is equals to three another k work and so on up to i will become n minus one here i will do k work k work k work okay up to k right after it i will become n when i will become n our condition will get false and i will break out of my loop okay so to calculate the time complexity of the given code first of all we need to calculate the total work done by that particular code so here can i write that my total work done total work is equals to at single iteration what is the work done the work done is k similarly at uh, uh, i is equals to 1 what is the work done k so to calculate the total number of the total amount of work done by done by like uh, n loops of uh, n uh, uh, for for loop uh, running which is running n times the total work done will be k plus k plus k up to n times that is nth k right so when i add all these kind of things so this thing will give me total work is equals to n k okay so in previous uh, chapters in previous like uh, videos i told you that uh, to calculate time complexity first of all we ignore we ignore constants after that the second step will be we will take the largest term here largest term here you can see that in the total work done k is constant so first of all we will ignore k after that, what is the largest term in our total work done that is n so our time complexity will become time complexity is equal to big of n so in this case in the simple loop and a single loop running when our single loop runs from 0 to n times the total work done is nk right so we need to add all the operations that is performed by nk uh, uh, that is performed by our loop so the total work done will be nk here we need to like first of all ignore constants after take the largest term that thing will become our time complexity so for single loop the time complexity will be big of n let's talk about nested loops so when it comes to nested loops when we have like two or three loops uh, there's a condition there are two conditions that we need to follow or there are two methods which we generally follow to calculate the time complexity of that particular nested loop so for nested loops for nested loops the first method we use to calculate like time complexity is will uh, like uh, take how many times our outer loop is running we will consider how many times our outer loop is running and we will multiply it how many times our inner loop is running so these uh, multiplication of how many times our inner loop let's just consider it m and our inner loop uh, how many times it is running let us consider it n so my time complexity will become m n so this thing will give me uh, my time complexity so this is the first method and this method is like a uh, valid or like uh, useful up to some extent about 90% of the questions we can do uh, nest, to calculate time complexity of nested loops about 90% of this question can be done, <coughs> can be done by just multiplying outer loop and the inner loop so uh, the second method is like useful for all questions you can apply the you can apply in a, uh, any question you want so the second method is uh, to know to know total like first of all uh, you need to like uh, see what are the operations going on and you need to like add all those operations that thing will give you total work after calculating total work uh, we did like in previous video like in simple loop analysis we did now like ignore constants and take largest term so here to uh, you need to know total number of total number of operations you are performing so this is how uh they are two methods these are the two methods and this is like 100% valid so we will uh, begin with this method after we will uh, proceed to this kind of method uh, this is like sim uh, first method is like simple second method is like little bit like uh, lengthy but it is also simple so here let us consider our loop in the loop we have two for loops so our uh, first loop our outer loop int i is equals to 0 and we are going up to i is less than n after it we are doing i plus plus after it in the inner loop uh, in the inner loop we will start from j is equals to i plus 1 and j should be less than n after j plus plus and i need you guys to observe one thing that is whatever the work we are performing whatever the operations taking place is inside the inside the inner loop inside the second loop 
so whatever the perform uh, operations we are performing that will take place in our in second loop that is our inner loop so this is the thing you need to observe here first of all after that let us talk about operations how many operations taking place here so let us consider a sample a sample example that is n is equals to 3 and i initially i is equals to 0 right okay so initially when i is equals to 0 our j value will be uh, 1 after it, what is the condition that is uh, j should be less than 3 so this condition uh, when this condition is true then our loop will uh, our loop will go inside after it we will perform all the operations all the statements which are there in our uh, inner loop okay so here you can see that the condition is true that is j is equals to 1 and j is less than 3 okay so we will perform whatever the operations after that j will increment that is uh, j will become 2 right after that j will become 3 so the up to this uh, the condition get false so how many times i am running my like uh, uh, inner loop two times after that i is equals to 1 so when i is equals to 1 our j will become 2 after that j will become 3 so how many times i am running my uh, inner loop one time after that i becomes 2 and j will run 0 times so j will run j will become 3 and the condition is itself false so i will run my inner loop for 0 times so here you can see so how many operations i am taking uh, taking place here that is uh, 2 plus 1 plus 0 so how many operations total 3 operations taking place so uh, we are we are like uh, performing 3 operations inside our uh, inner loop now let us see a general example that is when i is equals to 0 how many operations i am uh, taking place here when i is equals to 0 how many like operations how many times i am running my loop that is i am running n minus 1 times after it when i becomes 1 how many ta times i am running my inner loop that is n minus 2 times right okay similarly when i is equals to 2 how many times i am running n minus 3 times okay so when i is equals to 0 how many times i am running my inner loop n minus 1 times okay after it when i is equals to 1 how many times i am running my like a uh, uh, inner loop n minus 2 times similarly when i becomes 3 my inner loop will be n minus 3 after it, when i become 4 uh, my inner loop will be 4 up to these will go on when my i become n minus 1 i will run my uh, inner loop 0 time so can i add all those things that is n minus 1 plus uh, n minus 3 plus n minus 4 plus n minus 5 and so on up to 0 so this is my total work done so this thing will give me total work done and let me reverse this thing so my total work done is equal to 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus up to n minus 1 right okay so can you observe one thing that in our max class in our like ninth class chapter we used to study progressions chapter and can you observe one thing that this is a sum of arithmetic operations and the formula for calculating sum of uh, series of ap is a total work done is equals to n into n minus 1 divided by 2 so this thing will give me like the total work done and this is the formula to calculate sum of nth number of uh, in a ap series that is arithmetic progression series so this is the formula from math so remember guys that when we get ap the sum of that particular numbers up to nth term will become n into n minus 1 divided by 2 so this thing will become n square minus n divided by 2 divided by 2 so what is our rule to calculate time complexity first of all we ignore we ignore constants and second step will be take largest term take largest term so here first of all we will ignore constants so this thing will become n square minus n so uh, second step will be uh, take the largest term so we'll ignore this and our time complexity will become big of n square so for two loops for nested loops uh, for two loops our uh, time complexity will become big of n square similarly let us do like similar kind of for loop and let us see what the time complexity it will give us now in this loop what we are performing here you can see that our uh, i is equals to 0 after it we are running our outer loop from i is equal, i should be less than n after it we are performing i is equals to i plus 1 in the inner loop what we are doing j is equals to 0 and j should be less than i after it we are performing j is equals to j plus 1 and inside our inner loop uh, we are performing some constant work let us consider k so let us observe our outer loop and inner loop uh, connections and you need to observe one thing here that whatever the work that is going to take place whatever the operations we are going to do that is that will happen in a, inside our inner loop 
so inner loop will take care of the operations okay now let us observe how many like uh, how many times we are performing our operations uh, our k operations like so let us uh, consider that uh, when i is equals to 0 our j will start from 0 to 0 that is it will run 0 times that is uh, j should be less than i right so here 0 is not less than 0 so this condition will get false so our inner loop don't work after that i will become 1 so from j is equals to 0 to will run up to uh, j is equals to 0 to 1 that is j is equals to like uh, 0 to yeah 0 to 0 here j should be not le less than 1 yeah 0 times after it it will run our loop for n times right okay so here condition is true that is uh, j is less than i that is 0 is less than i so this loop uh, will get uh, run by one time so this will run one time after j will be i becomes 2 after j is equals to 0 to uh, it will run how many times it will run from 0 to 1 that is 2 times after it i will become 3 so we will run our loop j is equal to 0 to 2 so this will run 3 times so can you observe one thing that the uh, work or the operations is like increasing uh, at every iterations so as the value of like uh, j increases uh, that is i increases then the number of operations which is taking place in our inner loop will also increase that is let us consider that i is equals to n minus 1 then our uh, loop will start from j is equals to 0 to n minus 2 so the total number of operations that will take place here is n times so this loop will get uh, run by n times okay so the total work which is uh, like uh, done here is uh, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus we need to like add all the operations that is going uh, to take place in our inner loop so these uh, addition of all operations will give us total work from that we can calculate our time complexity so 0 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus up to n so what is this this is our ap so what is the formula for calculating sum of terms in our ap that is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 so this thing will give me n square minus n divided by 2 and what is the first step that is ignore constants and the second step is take largest term so first of all we will ignore constant after it we will ignore the smallest term so my time complexity will become big of n square so for this loop also for this nested loop also we got our time complexity as big of n square now let us uh, take another example which is very very important when it comes to nested loops so let us see that so before we start this third loop analysis i want you guys to pause the video and try to uh, find out uh, the time complexity of pyramid questions like we did nine pattern questions we did like inverted uh, and rotated pyramid after a zero one triangle problem so you need to calculate these two things that is inverted pyramid after zero one triangle you need to calculate i want you guys to like calculate the time complexity of a zero one triangle and inverted uh, like uh, rotated pyramid question like we did now that i want you guys to like uh, calculate the time complexity of that code here we have the loop that is i is equals to zero and i is going up to n here what we are incrementing we are incrementing like this that is uh, i is equals to i plus k so let us consider for example that is k is equals to 5 so we are incrementing our i as i plus 5 so we are taking now in previous questions we used to take one jump one jump one jump so i will become let us consider that uh, in previous example that i is equals to 1 so it will become 2 it will become 3 it will become 4 here let us consider that i is equals to 0 so it will not become 1 it will become 5 after 10 after 15 after 20 so it will take 5 5 jumps so in the inner loop what we are doing in the inner loop j is equals to i plus 1 so we are starting from j is equals to i plus 1 and j is, should be less than or equals to k after j plus plus so let me demonstrate you in the form of number line so let us consider that this is our like outer loop line so let us consider that we are running n is equals to 50 so from i is equals to 0 we are running our loop up to 49 okay after that, what we are doing here we are taking 5 5 jumps in the outer loop we are taking 5 5 times this is 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 so we are taking uh, 5 5 jumps so this is my outer loop so in a, uh, when it comes to inner loop to demonstrate in a graphical form 
you can see that I am starting from j is equals to i plus 1 that is from uh, 1 I am starting after that so let me like first of all demonstrate you by changing the pen uh, so this is my inner loop so in the inner loop I am covering this distance this distance this distance this distance so our outer loop will take care of this thing and this inner loop will take care of this like the phi jump we are taking phi phi jumps right so in the phi jumps we will cover like the distance in between them so the arrow which is representing here so this thing will uh, like covered by our inner loop and phi phi jumps phi phi leaps will taken by my outer loop so here how many operations i am performing so what i told you like we are using our first method so i told you now that to calculate time complexity for nested loops we can like proceed with two uh, methods that is first of all we need to like uh, know how many times i am running my outer loop into how many times i am running my inner loop okay after that the second step is, the second method is uh, if you don't want to use the first method then the second method will be you need to calculate the total amount of operations you are performing here in the previous two questions we have used uh, the operation method how many operations that is that are going to take place in our nested loop now let us consider let us use our first method here so first of all for what is the first thing we need to do we need to like find out our outer loop so how many times our outer loop is running let us consider here example as a n is equal to 15 so when n is equal to 15 how many times i am performing my outer loop can you observe one thing that uh, our outer loop our outer loop will run for three times when n is equal to 15 our outer loop will run for three times because uh, initially our i is equal to 0 after it, it will become 5 after it, it will become 10 that's all it can't become like 15 because i should be less than or equals to like uh, 15 right that is i should be less than or less than n so uh, we are run our outer loop for one two three times similarly when n is equal to 20 i will perform my outer loop for four times when n is equal to 25 uh, when n is equal to 25 i will perform my outer loop for five times so can i write one thing here that my outer loop outer loop is equal to n divided by k so the number of times my outer loop is running is equals to the number of like total uh, n value divided by my k value right so uh, let me change the pen this like a uh, pen is not like that much visible i think so yeah so our outer loop will become n divided by k so how many times our outer loop is running n divided by k times so our uh, like outer loop is sorted now let us talk about our inner loop so inner loop so can you observe one thing that when i is equals to 0 i will start i am starting from 1 after it, uh, i am taking j should be less than or equals to 5 so can you observe one thing that in the diagrammatic representation this is my inner loop right so it is covering 5 steps after it, it is covering 5 steps after it, it is covering 5 steps five steps and similarly five 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 so in all the iterations how, how many times our inner loop is running right it is covering five steps inside my like inner loop so inner loop is covering like at each outer loop iterations our inner loop is covering five 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 distance so what is phi phi is k here so can i write my inner loop uh, how many times my inner loop will run k times right okay so from the first method what i told you that to calculate time complexity you just need to like first of all find out how many times our outer loop is running multiply it with how many times our inner loop working that thing will give us the time complexity so here outer loop into inner loop that is n divided by k into k so this thing will give me our time complexity so here time complexity is equal to big of n so this is the example i wanted to show you guys Right? Uh, most of the teachers are uh, most of the uh, like things you will find in like uh, students most of the students will assume that uh, if there is two loops then the time complexity if they are like two loops then time complexity will be big of n square this is not like uh, true for most of the cases yeah this is like true for most of the scenarios but in few particular scenarios like example like this that these this is a nested loop here we have two loops but that doesn't mean that it will give us a time complexity of big of n this is not true at all in some cases it might give but in uh, minor cases this might give you time complexity of big of n yeah this is the example i wanted to show you right okay with that being said i hope you have understood the example that how our outer loop is like taking jumps and what is happening in our inner loop so in our outer loop we are like taking 
five five steps five five steps and in the inner loop we are covering those five steps and in this we are performing k operations so our outer inner loop will run five times and will add k plus k plus k plus k so our inner loop will become 5k right similarly our outer loop like uh, how many times it is running n divided by k times so we'll multiply k into like uh, our outer loop running so this thing will give me our time complexity that is big of n so uh, if user has given you two loops then it doesn't mean that the time complexity of that particular code is big of n square right first of all you need to understand how many operations is it is taking a place in our code or how many times our outer loop is running and how many times our inner loop is running so by understanding how many times our iterator or iteration taking place in our given code uh, by understanding those kind of thing we can like calculate our time complexity now let us talk about a simple three nested loops here right here this is our first loop second loop third loop so here initially i'm running i is equals to zero to n times after it, i is equals to j is equals to zero to n after it, uh, k uh, our third loop is k is equals to 0 to n so can you observe one thing that i am running my loop for from 0 to n so how many times our outer loop first outer loop is running first outer loop is equals to n after that my first inner loop first inner loop how many times it is running n after that our second inner loop second inner loop how many times it is running n times so what i told you that my time complexity is equals to my outer loop into my inner loop so by multiplying this thing this will give me my time complexity so here it is running n n n so multiply n into n into n so this thing will give me n cube so what is the largest term here n cube is the largest term so this will become my time complexity so for three loops in most of the cases this will give me time complexity of big of n cube now let us talk about what is the time complexity of bubble sort so we already know that the time complexity of bubble sort is big of n square now we are going to see how we got like a big of n square for bubble sort here we'll have a function public static void bubble sort function in this we are passing our array arr in the function first of all we are running our outer loop uh, turn is equal to zero and turn should be less than n minus one after turn plus plus in the inner loop what we are doing j is equal to zero and j should be less than arr dot length minus one minus turn arr dot length that is n minus one minus turn after that we are doing j plus plus and we are checking that uh, if arr or that is of our first element is greater than our second element if yes then swapping will take place if not then move into next iteration this is how our like bubble sort works and we have studied already like what is bubble sort and how like what is the logic behind bubble sort and all those kind of thing in detail okay now let us see how we can able to calculate the time complexity of the bubble sort so for that for that thing uh, my inner loop is running from i is equal to 0 to i should be less than n minus 1 time after that my outer loop is running j is equal to 0 to j should be less than n minus 1 minus i times okay here in the place of terms i am taking i because i don't want to write like long name t u r n so for that i am taking i okay so here i am incrementing at each iteration i am incrementing i value after j value okay now let us understand like at, at each iteration how many operations i am going to perform here so at each operation that is when i is equal to 0 when i is equal to 0 this is my outer loop this is my inner loop okay so when i is equal to 0 how many times i am running my uh, inner loop from j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 minus 0 so how many times n minus 1 times so can i write that when n is equal to 0 i is equal to 0 i am running my inner loop n times so n times i becomes 2 my inner uh, my inner loop uh, work will be n minus yeah, n minus 2 that is uh, n minus 1 minus 2 after it when i is equal to 3 n minus 3 after it up to uh, n up to n that is n minus 1 how i am doing here n minus 1 minus n so i am performing like minus 1 that is 0 times okay so this is how my inner loop and outer loop is going to take place so can you observe one thing here that in my outer loop in my outer loop how many operations i am performing so uh, when i is equal to 1 i am performing n operations after it uh, for like uh, i is equal to 2 i am performing 
So when n is n is equals to two, I am running my out, outer loop n minus one time. After it, when n is equals to three, I am running my outer loop uh, n minus three times. Sorry, n minus two. After it, when n becomes four, n minus four. At each up, uh, at each like uh, iteration, I am performing k work here, k work here, k work, k work, k work. So similarly, can you observe that at worst case, I have to run, uh, like uh, run my loop for almost n times. So my outer loop at the worst case, we always think about worst case when we are calculating our time complexity. Okay. So at worst case, my outer loop is running n times. Similarly, at worst case, my inner loop will also work for n times. So what I told you that my outer loop into my inner loop. So these thing will give me time complexity. So can you observe one thing that my outer loop, how many times it is running? n times. What is my inner loop? How many times it is running? n times. So my time complexity will become outer loop. How many times our outer loop has run into how many times our inner loop has run. So n into n big of n into n. So this thing will give me uh, time complexity as big of n square and will ignore all the constants because of our rules. So this thing for bubble sort our time complexity is big of n square. So you just had to think about the worst case scenario and for worst case scenario how many times I am running my outer loop. After it, for worst case, for the same worst case scenario, how many times I am running my inner loop. So take that particular uh, number of times our outer loop has run and take the number of times our inner loop has run and multiply those two things. So these things will give me our time complexity. Now let us talk about binary search. So we already studied uh, binary search is used to, to find a particular key in our array and the logic of binary search is first of all we'll see we'll uh, take indexes of our array like uh, let us consider that this is our array so here we'll start we'll take index as starting index after this is our ending index and we will take this element as mid right okay so start is equals to 0 end is equals to err dot length minus 1 that is our last element after that we'll uh, start our while loop in the while loop we'll calculate mid value and if that particular mid value is equal to key then return its index if not then check whether the particular mid value is greater than key if it is greater than key if it is greater than key then change the value of mid if it is less than key then change the value of start so this is how the like binary search code works now let us talk about the intuition so we are going to see uh, by intuition we can calculate the time complexity so here let us consider that this is our n array so what we are doing we are like breaking down our array so if it is like present in the right part then we'll go search only on the right side of my array if it is like present in the right uh, left part then we'll go on and study, uh, like uh, search it on the left part of my array only so what we are doing here we are breaking down our arrays for to calculate or to search whether the particular element is present or not so we will take this particular like a uh, nth array and we'll break into two pieces and we'll search so what we'll do we'll break into this particular array into n by 2 and we'll search in the n by second part so if it, it is present it is not present then we'll again break the this n by 2 part into n by 4 and we'll search for this particular part these like division will continue for n by 8th part and so on up to a single element that is our single element is 1 uh, so can you observe one thing that here uh, the division of array is happening by 2 by 2 by 2 that is 2 to the power of 0 2 to the power of 1 n divided by 2 to the power of uh, square that is n to n divided by 2 cube n divided by 2 power 4 and so on up to for single element n divided by 2 to the power of k is equal to 1 right okay so these expression from this expression i can like extract my time complexity so let us see that n is equals to 2 to the power of k okay now uh, for single element uh, this is my like uh, this is my uh, equation right this is my equation now let us apply log on both sides so by applying log n is equals to k log 2 to the power of k and this k will come here so log n is equals to k log 2 so from this i can extract the equation that is log n minus k log 2 is equals to 0 okay k log n minus k log 2 is equals to 0 and what our rule will tell first of all we we'll ignore constants and second one is uh, 
विल टेक और विल टेक द लार्जेस्ट सम लार्जेस्ट एलिमेंट लार्जेस्ट टर्म और वॉट एवर कैन से सो हियर दिस इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म विल इग्नोर ऑल द कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म्स सो माई टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी विल बिकम लॉग एन सो माई टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी फॉर बाइनरी सर्च इज लॉग एन सो दिस थिंग विल गिव मी टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एज बिग ऑफ लॉग एन सो आई होप हैव अंडरस्टूड द लॉजिक दैट फ्रॉम द इंट्यूशन वी हैव वी हैव ऑब्जर्व वन थिंग दैट वी आर लाइक ब्रेकिंग अवर अरे बाय मल्टीपल ऑफ टू दैट इज पावर ऑफ टू सो एन डिवाइडेड बाय टू टू पावर ऑफ जीरो एन डिवाइडेड बाय टू टू पावर ऑफ वन एन डिवाइडेड बाय टू स्क्वायर टू क्यूब टू टू पावर ऑफ फोर एंड वी आर लाइक डिवाइडिंग ऑल द अरे एंटिल वी गेट अ सिंगल एलिमेंट दैट इज अवर अरे सो हाउ मेनी लाइक ऑपरेशंस वी आर परफॉर्मिंग वी नीड टू लाइक ऐड ऑल दिस ऑपरेशंस so instead of like uh, this thing is like a uh, less than this thing because uh, the iteration or the iteration the ith iteration happening here let us consider that these are my jth iteration and this is my ith iteration so ith iteration is like greater than my jth iteration because this is the last like a uh, last element right so to extract from the large array to my like small array uh, jth iterator is always the less than ith iterator right because this is my last iteration so last iteration is like always greater than my initial iterator iteration okay so uh, to calculate time complexity what we need to remember we need to remember one thing that we always like calculate time complexity for the worst case so what is the worst case here this is my worst case so i am taking the equation of my worst case and from the equation i am like uh, uh, doing some mathematical terms and from the mathematical terms i can extract my time complexity so this is how like i can calculate the time complexity of binary search so this is my code right uh, fibonacci class in the fibonacci class this is my function static int fibonacci in this i am passing n value if n is equals to 0 or n is equals to 1 these are my base cases then return the value of n that's all after it uh, uh, return fibonacci of n minus 1 Plus Fibonacci of n minus two. This is the classic equation we have studied in Fibonacci uh, like a video. So what is the Fibonacci of one? Uh, Fibonacci of n is equals to Fibonacci of n minus one plus Fibonacci of n minus two. So this is the classic equation we have obtained from that particular video. Okay. So can I write? Can I rewrite this particular equation? That is Fibonacci of n. Fibonacci of n is equals to Fibonacci of n minus one plus Fibonacci of n minus 2 so what is f here f is the function right so f is the function so for calculating nth term present at my fibonacci series i need to first of all calculate n minus 1 term after at n minus second term so by calculating the n minus 1 term and n minus second term these two things will give me fibonacci of n so can i replace my f by time so can i write that my fibonacci of, that is time of time taken to perform n operations for fibonacci series is equals to time taken for n minus 1 operation plus time taken for n minus 2 operations similarly i can rewrite this particular equation as t of n minus 1 is equals to t of n minus 2 plus t of n minus 3 after that similarly t of n minus 2 is equals to t of n minus 3 plus t of n minus 4 after it similarly t of n minus 3 is equals to t of n minus 4 plus t of n minus 5 and t of n minus 4 is equals to t of n minus 5 plus t of n minus 6 and this process will like get continued when our t of i will get like a for base case that is t of 2 is equals to t of 1 plus t of 0 and plus k some constant work so whatever the operations i am performing like this is the base case right for this performing uh, this is the call stack so function calling will like take place like this like this like this and each function call i am uh, like cal, uh, like doing some k work k work or k operations so for that particular reason i am writing k here so t of 1 will suppose let me uh, like it will take k1 operations and t of 0 uh, let us consider that it will take t2 operate you know, k2 operations so my t2 will become k1 plus k2 plus k so this thing will become my uh, like t of 2 that is time taken for second call is equals to k1 plus k2 plus k okay so this is how like we can like uh, extract the equation for like a uh, time uh, uh, time taken for n calls okay so can i am just writing this mathematical form 
Now, to calculate the time complexity of Fibonacci series, we need to observe one thing. So, uh, before we uh, like uh, dive into the observation part, I wanted to tell you that this thing is known as Master's Theorem. Master's Theorem. Okay, I can provide you the notes related to Master's Theorem. If you are interested, then you can study. Okay, now let us talk about what is the thing that we need to observe to calculate the time complexity of the given Fibonacci series. Let us talk about our tree like structure. I already told you that Fibonacci series uh, in the call stack, our like uh, structure is formed and the structure is uh, looks like a tree. Uh, basically, it uh, looks like a tree. Okay, so this is my let us consider that I am calculating Fibonacci of 4. So, for calculating Fibonacci of 4, I need to calculate Fibonacci of 3 first. After that, Fibonacci of 2. For Fibonacci of 3, I need to calculate Fibonacci of 2. After that, Fibonacci of 1. For Fibonacci of 2, I need to calculate Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 0. And these things is my base case. So, I don't need to like proceed any further for base cases. After that, for Fibonacci of 2, Fibonacci of 1, Fibonacci of 2. Like this is how our call stack like takes place like this. Like this kind of thing our call stack or recursions takes place right okay so you can see that i am going like a deep into the roots of the like a deep into the like a child notes of that particular like a fibonacci recursion call so these thing is known as depth first approach okay can you observe one thing the thing which we need to observe one thing here that here I am performing one call. Here I am performing two calls. Here I am performing four calls. And similarly, if the particular given number is like a big, let us consider that here. Let us consider a big example. I am like first of all erasing these things, or let us consider I am writing this here, but in a small format that is f of seven, f of six, f of six, f of five, f of five, f of four. And f of 6 is f of 5, f of 4, f of 4, f of 3, f of 4, f of 3, f of 3, f of 2. So can you observe one thing that at first recursion call, I am doing one work. After it, at second recursion call, I am doing two work. After it, I am at third, four, at like a, uh, uh, fourth. How, how many calls or how many operations I am doing? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. So, can you observe one thing that at my first level, at my like first level, initial level, what is uh, how many calls I am uh, like doing 2 to the power of 0, after 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. So, as the depth of my tree increases, the uh, like how many uh, uh, recursion calls or how many like operations I am performing is increasing exponentially so like uh, these three will continue and uh, will get elements up to 2 to the power of n so we'll call like elements up to 2 to the power of n elements here so we'll take the worst case here that is 2 to the power of n so the total here how many calls i'm performing 2 to the power of n so these thing this is the worst case right so these thing this is the worst case for my call stack or recursion calls so this thing will become my time complexity so total number of calls is equals to total how many total number of calls i am calling uh, i am calling uh, first initially how many calls that is 2 to the power of 1 2 to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 3 and so on up to how many calls up to my last level so what is my last level that is 2 to the power of n so at the last level how many calls i am performing 2 to the power of n calls so this thing will become my time complexity so my time complexity is equal to 2 big of 2 to the power of n so this is the exponential time complexity and this is not like very good this is not like uh, not so good time complexity like uh, uh, we don't like proceed if you like uh, write the code this particular code in like lead code or hack rank or like interview questions then this will like exceed our like uh, time uh, this will show us an error that is time level exceeded exceeded like a time exceeded and it will cross the time limit that is provided in our question so for that particular question we will study in detail in upcoming chapters like how we can optimize this particular question so this is how uh, the time complexity of fibonacci series is that is big of uh, 2 to the power of n that is exponential power 
and it is not good time complexity now let us talk about how to approach coding questions so to approach uh, the approach of coding question is first of all whenever you get a question whenever like you are doing some questions or whenever you are in a contest or doing like some hackathons these kind of like coding rounds all those kind of things the first step you need to do is go with the logic or like uh, apply apply brute force so whatever the things like you are getting first of all you need to like first of all read the question read the question and take the information so these are the things that have that uh, this particular question has given me and what the question is asking whether it is asking to search a particular element whether it is asking to like sort the element uh, and uh, whether it is asking like uh, to find out uh, the what is the number of grid ways or number of recursion calls that we need to do or uh, strings number of strings or whether it is asking to like convert the string in this particular format in this time complexity and all those things first of all understand the question like first step is to understand the question so first of all you need to understand that these are the information given in my question so this is the array this is the key index after this is my like uh, uh, total size of the array so uh, remember guys that one thing that in coding questions whatever the question whatever the information given you is only in uh, useful information in like previous uh, uh, our school days uh, in J mains paper like some information is given like that is not that much necessary and that like takes a long time that takes a long time to like solve that particular information or to like decode that particular information but in coding when it comes to coding uh, whatever the question like uh, whatever the information that is there in the question that is used to like uh, help you that is like only here only there to help you not to like distract you from anywhere so uh, first of all write whatever the things that we in have in our question what are the things that we have in our question after it, second what is the question asking you like what are the things that uh, uh, you need to find out in the question after that apply brute force uh, apply uh, brute force so what is brute force go with logic so how you can form logic first of all like before you go do in your computer first of all you need to do in uh, your yeah, book in your book so take pen and paper so take pen and paper and first of all try to solve it in paper in logic so this is the approach i should give i should do so uh, by doing on paper you will understand the logic and the working of the question after that uh, from the brute uh, brute force approach uh, that is not uh, that in some cases or in most of the cases that might not like the efficient approach so you, you can able to find the solution so from the brute force approach you can find the solution but when you like uh, uh, run cases or run all the cases it will show you that time limit is exceeded or it will show you that uh, uh, space limit is exceeded so uh, these tell you that the brute force you have approach is working but it is not inbound with our time complexity so in coding platforms you can observe that some uh, constraints are there they are like in small box they will give like some constraints that our uh, input should be input should be like uh, from 1 to uh, n our input should be 10 to the power of 8 10 to the power of 9 10 to the power of 12 so it he is giving you like 10 to the power of 12 size array for that your code is taking too much time so uh, whatever the solution you have obtained from the brute force it is not working so for that particular thing you need to optimize so after like getting the logical part of our code from the brute force you have written the code now it's time to optimize so the solution uh, the third step this is my second step writing my solution using our code editor whatever you want like after that, the third step is optimization so uh, whatever the co uh, code you have obtained from the brute force you need to optimize it within the time limit that is provided in the question right after optimization in terms of time complexity you will get your final solution let us consider an example let us consider an example that a uh, user has given you like a array array in this uh, yeah, this is a n size array and uh, in this you need to like uh, find a particular element in the uh, given array and you need to return its index so most of the people who are like doing this coding questions first of all their thinking will go into linear search so this is brute force that is whatever the thing we are like uh, getting from logic that thing is our brute force so we'll apply uh, linear search here after apply, applying linear search you will uh, find out that the time complexity of uh, uh, 
linear search is big of n and it is not like that much efficient so from these you will like uh, start to optimize the th code you will start to think oh what is the efficient way to do this particular question so by like uh, uh, understanding or like thinking about optimization you will approach you will get into binary search so binary search will give you big of n log n time and after optimization this code might run and what you do know, do you know like after optimization if you like again think about it then you can like directly do the question so what is the direct method first of all sort using inbuilt array after it like uh, give the last index so this thing will give me big of n time complexity so from big of n we have like optimized code and again we have optimized the code so this is how optimization will take place so first of all we will initially start with our brute force approach and from the brute force from the small thing we will optimize that particular given like array or given code so this is how uh, you need to think about the question this is the approach you should follow so what are the question you have given first of all write down these are the information given me uh, these are the information that has uh, uh, that are there in the question and uh, these are the things that is asking in my question and how i can approach it so from this you can uh, extract or you will approach a logical answer and that logical answer may not be like efficient all the times so that thing is known as brute force and in some cases that might the brute force approach is not like that much uh, efficient like that much efficient so to uh, make our code efficient uh, we need to optimize so we need to think about what is the best time com complexity i will get for this code like after like getting optimization this is the things which we need to think so generally when generally when we are like performing in hackathons or in coding platforms generally uh, one second so it will give us like these many seconds are allotted and in most of the cases uh, my worst code like suppose if i am writing my worst uh, like code that is worst so it will take only one second so in within one second if my code is running then uh, the all the text te test cases will pass if it is like taking more time greater than one second then it will show me that time limit time limit exceeded so uh, generally in one op one second how many operations can take place uh, uh, in one second 10 to the power of 8 operations can take place so uh, if your code is like uh, performing 10 to the power of 8 operations in one second then it may uh, like pass all the cases all the test cases if it is like taking more time then it might show you that time limit exceeded or if you uh, the whatever the code you have written it is like exceeding space complexity or the space which is provided in the code then it will show you that uh, space limit exceeded like these are the things you need to like remember when you are doing like coding questions in coding platforms so let us consider that for linear search uh, for linear search the given array size is uh, user uh, in the question you can see that in the constraints uh, part the input size is given let us consider that our array is 10 to the power of 9 10 to the power of 9 so here the given time limit is 10 to the power of n that is one second so if we apply time complexity then uh, the number of operations which will take place is big of n so total number of operations will take place in your code is 10 to the power of 9 operations can you imagine like 10 to the power of 9 that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so these many operations are taking place by applying linear search so that is not an efficient way let us consider that uh, here uh, n is equals to 10 to the power of like uh, uh, 10 then our operations will be 10 to the power of 10 operations will take place here like these operations are like very huge and it will show you that uh, time limit is exceeding time limit is exceeding and your test case will fail so in the instead of like applying linear search if we apply binary search then what is the uh, like time complexity of binary search that is log n so for uh, log n that is n values 10 to the power of 9 then our operations will become uh, these values approximately equals to 30 so here we will perform only 30 operations so for uh, by applying linear search how many operations we are performing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 after that for binary search how many operations we are performing by applying binary search how many operations 30 operations so you can see that there is a huge difference like there is a huge difference in terms of efficiency of our code 
like okay so uh, this is how like uh, these are the three steps first of all go with the brute force approach whatever the logic you have write it down in your book and from the logic uh, write uh, or write your code and from the solution you have like derived from your logic try to optimize that particular solution or the code like uh, from optimization we can like do all the questions so these are the like basic uh, uh, approach to solve any coding question up to now i hope you have learned about what is time complexity what is space complexity and we have done a lot of examples and i have shown you like how to calculate time complexity and uh, like space complexity of different things and remember guys that time complexity and space complexity like is not related to only theoretical part we have done like we haven't code in this chapter but these are not like limited to theoretical part only and when you are like doing uh, when you are out in like doing uh, uh, coding questions or like uh, you are in coding platforms or like giving uh, you are in competitive coding then time complexity is like very very important uh, like uh, uh, thing you need to like uh, had uh, you need to like put your brain on and uh, you need to like focus on this is the time complexity and within the time complexity within that given time limit how i can like perform my code you need to remember these kind of things and to perform the code within the time limit you need to understand time complexity you need to understand space complexity so i hope you have understood the concepts related to time and space complexity and uh, when you are like doing like uh, not just in coding platforms when you are also doing like uh, uh, our practice questions our assignment questions which are provided after each chapter try to think about like this is the way and how i can optimize this what is the like correct way is it a good co time complexity or is it a bad time complexity think about it and try to optimize the code like uh, think about like the particular question like five times ten times and try to optimize that particular code and this thing will like uh, like trigger your interest in coding and this thing will get, take you like too far in life so with that being said we have completed our time and space complexity chapter and in this we have learned like a lot about like time complexity space complexity big of omega and a lot about theory part also what is master's theorem what is like a uh, uh, big of omega theta i like uh, what is average best worst complexities and all those kind of things and how we can make our code efficient and what are the things that will take to uh, increase the efficiency of code and all those kind of things and why this chapter is very very important we have studied all about it now in the upcoming chapters we are going to learn about uh, backtracking method what is backtracking and uh, in this chapter in that chapter we are going to do some really interesting questions so with that being said i will see you in the next one